Well, there's something quite historical and classical about herb gardens, and one of those herbs that really has a lot of attention and goes back for many years that you'll find both in formal and informal gardens is lavender. And we have lavender planted in some of our formal beds here, and I thought I'd give you the lowdown on this particular perennial plant. Now, lavender is, is really known as an herb, but most people grow it for the fragrance of, of the foliage, but also for the color of the flower. Really, it's a nice contrast for us because the foliage comes kind of in a whirl and, and it grows kind of with a grayish color, but it's not quite as gray as our Santa Lina, so it's a nice contrast. And of course, the nice, attractive purple flowers, and most people know it's very, very fragrant. Lavender is used sometimes as a specimen plant, and then you can also use it with some of the newer varieties as a border plant. And the specimen plants, a lot of times that are more sprawling, can get about, oh, anywhere to three feet, and that would be the traditional one. This particular cultivar that's growing in here is called Munstead, and it gets a little bit more dwarf, about one foot to one and a half feet. And again, it's a nice, nice attraction, and it doesn't get too tall, even though it's in the center of our bed. Now, over in our other bed here, we just planted one. It's not really looking too good yet, but it's the All America Selection for 1994, and it's called Lady Lavender. And it's very unique in that it's, it's in there competing with flowers and vegetables when it's really more of an herb. But it's, it's one of the plants that's being promoted a lot this year. Again, it's called Lady, and it's even more dwarf, about 10 to 12 inches. Now, one thing I want to tell you about Lady Lavender, a lot of the lavenders that you'll plant, like this Munstead that we planted last year, did not bloom for us last year. Uh, the Lady Lavender will actually bloom the first year, and that's one of its best attributes. And it takes anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks from when you start it by seed to when it's ready to put out after that frost-free day. And one thing that we learned kind of the hard way is that lavender, when you plant it by seed, it needs to be exposed with light. So you just sprinkle on the soil, water it in. Ours was covered up, so it really has struggled and it doesn't look too good. It's just now starting to pull out. And I, I think we can even see bloom spikes on it and the plant's probably only one or two inches tall. The thing you need to keep in mind though about lavender is it is cold hardy for Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, it will grow anywhere from zones five to nine, but you really need to give them well-drained soil because if you put them in a heavy soil, they'll get root rot problems, they'll die on you, uh, get more leaf spots. They need a lot of good air circulation, which you can see we have here. Plus, they like full sun. And so if you'll get them in the right cultural conditions, you'll have more success with them. If you get them in too much shade, they get thin on you, and again, all the disease problems that we talked about. Now, if you like lavender in your garden, you'll notice that they're really pretty easy to propagate. As a matter of fact, this time of year, you can come in and take some of the side shoots, the suckers, and just root those in sand, uh, moist sand, and they'll root pretty easily or you can come in and, and try to collect seeds and plant them again several weeks before the frost free date next year or if you get a big enough clump you can divide them this fall and so they're pretty easy to propagate and again very attractive most people are going to grow them again for sachets to use in, in potpourris but earlier today we visited with one of our Oklahoma gardening ambassador volunteers and she showed us a little bit more challenging way to make them using a lavender wand. And let's see what she has in store for us in that demonstration. These are lavender wands, or lavender, some people refer to them as lavender bottles. And what you need to get started is ribbon, eighth inch to a fourth of an inch, a pair of scissors, and of course, lavender. And you may wanna use a yarn needle to help with the weaving. Uh, in harvesting the lavender, you want to try to pick the longest ones you can find. Uh, if you're running short on length, you can strip off that first set of lavender all the way down to the leaves. And then you just save this to go in your potpourri or some other kind of dried arrangements. And then you collect them all together up at the top. Tie them with your ribbon or a piece of string. And I find it easier just to go ahead and tie it with the ribbon. And that way I don't have to worry about something else to get in my way. And then this is the hardest part for me is once it's tied, is inverting it upside down. And 
and just let it fall over the lavender heads. And then you would take your ribbon, pull it out, and then you would start by picking up two stocks and either going under or over. And then the next two, you would do reverse of what you did before, either under or over. And this is one I've started for today. And I'm gonna show you the over and under. And I've gotten this one down to the end where we're ready to tie off of it. And for some decoration, I've picked some sunflowers just to stick in with my flower stalks. And I'm just gonna tie the ribbon around it, around a few times. And then we're just gonna wind it down. to the bottom and then you can either tie it off there or some people like to wind it back up for a doubled effect. And then they would just tie a bow in it. And what the lavender wands or bottles are used for would be to uh, scent your uh, lingerie drawers or uh, your closets or lay on top of your dressers. and. My kids have already started arguing over which one gets which color, so I'll let the kids pick one out and put in their stinky sock drawers to freshen those up. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge both classic and contemporary.